Good evening and welcome to Current Issues. I'm your host, Hisham Tilawi. Tonight, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have two guests for you. In the first hour, we'll be speaking with Dr. Muhammad Khodor. He's a writer, an activist. He uh, is a medical doctor, but he has, he's not going to be talking to us about medicine and uh, diseases, but he will talk to us about some social diseases that we have, which is uh, mainly political diseases. We'll uh, see what they are and how he diagnoses them. Also in the second hour, we will have Reverend Ted Pike. Most of you know Ted Pike because he's been on the program about three or four times before. Tonight we are going to talk to him about some certain issues, mainly political issues. Also, he is a reverend. He has an organization called Truth Tellers with the National Prayer Association. We will be speaking with him in the uh, second hour. Also, don't forget that next week, starting next week, we will be on, instead of 9 o'clock, we will be coming on at 8 o'clock Central. It will be 8 to 10 Central, which I'm sure a lot of you will uh, enjoy that. That way you don't have to stay up late for our second hour. And uh, so uh, that will work uh, pretty good for us too. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to start with, the Israelis are attacking Gaza. Well, let's take the ABC of what's going on in Palestine. Israel invaded the portion of Palestine that was allocated for the Palestinians. Remember the old thing we were saying in 1947, they had partitioned Palestine between Arabs and Jews, and so the part that was left for the Arabs, it was supposed to be 48%, but now it was chopped down all the way to 22%, and with what Olmert is doing, is going to be down to about 11%. But so far, so far, we are on the 22 percent. But what is happening? So the Palestinians are on this 22 percent of Palestine that was left for them. The Israeli army is occupying Palestine and therefore what is happening is the, um, the, 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 the Palestinians are on their homes while the Israeli army is coming to their homes kidnapping their men, women, and children, and taking them away. Now, a few days ago, the Palestinians went into an Israeli army base, and the news media is telling you they kidnapped an Israeli soldier. Now, let's go back to the ABCs of warfare. When you take, when you take a soldier in a combat situation, in, that is considered you taking in a prisoner. You're not kidnapping a soldier. You do not kidnap soldiers. Now, if you went to his house and kidnapped him, that is called kidnapping. But when you go into a military base and there's a firefight between Palestinians and Israelis, and the media is calling it kidnapping. Condoleezza Rice is calling it kidnapping. The president's calling it kidnapping. The White House is calling it kidnapping. You see, kidnapping is a bad word. When you hear about it, it's a bad word. But now when Israel goes and kidnaps, there's 10,000 Palestinians, ladies and gentlemen, in Israeli jails. All of them have been kidnapped, either off the street or from their homes or from their businesses. They either come to your house at 2 o'clock in the morning with killer dogs. Of course, they can't go into your house, not because they couldn't, but because they are scared. So they send their killer dogs to drag everybody out. And they drag children, they drag men, they drag women, and they hold them off to Israeli jails without being tried, without being anything. Okay? So what happens, ladies and gentlemen, is the Israeli army kidnaps Palestinians, but you don't hear about it that way. When they tell you about it, they tell you the Israeli army arrested arrested. What jurisdiction do they have to arrest Palestinians? Only authority can arrest. Of course, in, in this country, citizens can even do a citizen arrest. But we can't go and arrest people in Mexico. 
We can't go and arrest people in Canada because there is a government there. Now, in Palestinian territories, there's something called the Palestinian National Authority. If Israel wants somebody, they can ask the Palestinian Authority to extradite him through the process and through the agreement and through whatever international law that, that applicable at that time. But what the Israelis do, they go into Palestinian cities, they go to someone's house, they bring all their vehicles, all their tanks, they go to someone's house, and they kidnap people. There are, there are women in Israeli jails. There are children in Israeli jails. There's over 10,000 Palestinians in Israeli jails. And for one soldier, the Israelis want to send 20,000 troops. Now, can you imagine the, the you, you've seen the tanks and the armored vehicles and all the, the airplanes. Do you think the Israelis overnight were uh, able to assemble all these people? You know, there's logistics they have to think about. But you know what? They did not do this because of this soldier. This was planned. This had been planned for them to attack Gaza. Because the Israeli newspaper, Haaretz, I believe it was, they had an article about a week ago saying that the Israeli army is preparing to attack Gaza and move in on, uh, 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 and, and retake Gaza, the one that you heard about that they had left. Remember when they said that Gaza, you know, now the, the Israelis are leaving Gaza? Well, they never left, actually. Because, as you remember, they killed, they slaughtered a whole family on the beach. They slaughtered a whole family on the beach a couple of weeks ago, and we showed you the picture of these people. Now, for the Israelis to do that, and no one says anything, the whole world is silent. The whole world is silent. You should not be silenced, ladies and gentlemen, because what the Israelis are doing, they are doing it with your money. Every bullet, every child that, 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 that died in Palestine, every home that was bulldozed, it was bulldozed with a caterpillar, bulldozer, that destroys Palestinian homes. Now you tell me, ladies and gentlemen, if the Israelis send their army, imagine, you know, you've seen the, uh, the movie Red Dawn with uh, Patrick Swayze. That was back in the 80s, I think like 85 or 86. You remember that when they supposedly the Russians with their Cuban, uh, um, with the Cuban help or whatever, they occupied the southern part of the United States and Patrick Swayze and his brother, they start fighting back. And that's what the Palestinians are doing. They are fighting back with the little arms that they have. Nothing compared with these tanks. Nothing compared with the F-16s. Nothing compared with the 400 nuclear bombs that Israel has. The Palestinians have little guns, small guns. And remember also, the Palestinians have been without salaries or wages for three months now. And remember also that they are caged in. Israel closed the, closed the only gate going in and out of Gaza. So these people are living a miserable life. What else is going on? Israel last night or the night before, they destroyed the only electric, electrical generating plant that the Palestinians have in Gaza. And the estimates are six months going to be without electricity. When you don't have electricity, you don't have water, ladies and gentlemen, because you do need water to pump. You need electricity to pump water into homes. You want to know about terrorism, ladies and gentlemen? You want to know about terrorism? That is terrorism. When you have a whole nation, 1.2 million Palestinians living in Gaza, in the poorest spot and the most populated spot on earth, that's where the Palestinians are living under. And you have the second or third strongest army in the world attacking these people. And they go in a combat operation, they go into the, the dig a tunnel under a military base. They engage the Israelis in a fight, in a firefight. They kill two Israelis and they take one as a prisoner. You didn't know all that. Tell you what, uh, I know my guest is on, but let's go to uh, the phones and get a couple of calls, and then we'll come back to uh, Dr. Muhammad. Uh, let's see, let's go to Freedom 01. Go ahead, Freedom. Dr. Kalani, how 
Wow, I want to thank you for explaining what is going on because just like in Iraq two weeks ago when the Iraq insurgents took the two prisoners, uh, took the American soldier prisoners, Wolf Blitzer again on CNN and the people on Fox were saying that they kidnapped our uh, soldiers. You cannot kidnap a soldier. You could capture a soldier, but you cannot kidnap. You can only kidnap civilians. You see what I'm saying? You see, let me tell you. I want to thank you for bringing that out. You're welcome. They, 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 you know what, Freedom? When it's us killing them, they're terrorists. And we are the freedom fighters. When they, when we, we call it arrest them, when we capture them, we say we arrested but when they take one of us, they kidnap him. Why? Just like this Israeli soldier in a firefight. They kidnapped him. Okay, let's go to Larry on two. Go ahead, Larry. Dr. Zawal, uh, if the Palestinian people had war with the Israeli people? The Palestinian people have, in 1993, they have signed a peace agreement with the Israelis. And they accepted, remember, they had 48% that was given to them by the United Nations back in 1947. Now it was chopped all the way down to 22%, and they are saying, we will take it. Because the Palestinians, they are the weak part here. They are the weak party in here. Are they at war? Yes, they are at war with the Israelis. Not a war that was that they asked for. It's a war that was imposed on them oh, by no, the Israeli no. army. Now, what were the Hamas terrorists thinking about when they're going to go capture an Israeli uh, soldier? Well, Don't they care about their own people? Don't they know that Israel will not stand for stupid stuff like well, that? Let me, let me tell you something. Now, you call them uh, Hamas terrorists. Of course, you are carrying the same Thing as the news media here, Hamas, good or bad, they are fighting to liberate themselves from the Israeli army. Now, we call in those Iraqis that are fighting our army, we call them terrorists. All the Iraqis, all of a sudden, the people that we went to liberate and bring democracy to, we call them terrorists, just like you now called Hamas terrorists. They themselves, Dr. Salah, excuse me, Hold they on. liberate themselves. Wait till the Israeli army goes over there. Don't go and pick a fight on their land. Oh, you them. see? Larry, 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 you're mistaken. Okay, see, that's not... Hold the on. Tunnel. Hold on. They dug a tunnel and went to an Israeli military base that is on Palestinian land. They didn't go to Israel. No, they, are, no, they went to Israel. No, they did not. That is... You see? No, they did but not. They, what I heard on, on Democracy Now, they were trying to say that Israeli knew they were no, digging the tunnel. They I'm went... For you to start saying that, too. Uh, uh, what was that? That on Democracy Now, some guy was on there saying that the Israelis knew that they were going to dig the Well, you know what? I did. That was going to happen. Sure. I mean, I, I believe that story. Oh, I figured you would. I believe that story. Yes. I believe the story that the Israelis knew about the tunnel. Because, you know what? I mean, it's regardless if they knew or if not, because... You know, they had been prepared to go and attack Gaza three weeks ago, and this is, I guess, their reasoning. They'll say, well, let them dig that tunnel, let them go in, let them uh, uh, do whatever, and hey, let them take whatever. Because you know what? You, I mean, I really question this whole operation of how were they able to dig a tunnel underneath a military base all the way, and then how were they able to get away? Look, the, look, the Hamas people, the Palestinian the Hamas, hate them with a passion. They're going to do everything. They're going to keep firing bombs. Listen, Larry, let me... Larry, 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 you have children, Larry? Larry, you have children, Larry? Larry, you need to shut up and listen. I can't hear you what? I said you need to shut up and listen. No, no, I don't need to shut up. Yes, you do. Do you have, do you have children? I'm telling the truth. Do you have children? You don't know anything about the truth. Do you have children? Answer me. Sure, I have children. If I come to your house and kill your children in the middle of the night, if what are you going to do to me? I need to get out of there. Get out of there. That's right. You're ridiculous. Okay. All right. I'm finished with that idiot. Okay, I'll tell you what. We're going to be uh, taking a break here in a second. And when we come back, we're going to have Dr. Muhammad uh, Hudr with us. But uh, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, when you call here... You need to listen to what we tell you. Now, we will let you talk, but you cannot just talk and talk and talk and not listen. Because what I was going to ask Larry, and he should have thought about this, if I come to your house and I kill your children, are you going to hate me or are you going to love me? 
This happens every night and every day to the Palestinians. And when the Palestinians take it upon their, themselves to do something about it, then the whole world is calling, oh, terrorist, why did you go and get that soldier? Well, where in the world were you when the Palestinians being slaughtered every darn day, and then you have people, their homes were destroyed, and what are you doing about it? Nothing. The Palestinians do something, then, hey, the Palestinians are terrorists. Oh, they should not have done that. Shame on them. We will be right back.